Uh, next up, I would like to introduce a woman who has done an amazing job with refugee families that have made it here to Connecticut. Uh, Barb Davis is president of the Danbury Area Refugee Assistance Group, uh, also known as DARA. And uh, I've had the privilege of working for her a little bit with some tutoring of some of the kids who have come here. And she's got a very important message to share. Well, thank you very much uh, to the organizers and for uh, extending an invitation to Dara in order to say a few words. I have to say, since Alex uh, had me in tears, I hope I can get through this, um, but I'm going to do my best. Um, bringing people together around a common cause or shared principle is a right held dear in our country. Thanks so much to all of you who have come to add your voice to the concerns about what is happening to the people, the human beings that are being detained at our southern border. The nonprofit that I help run, Danbury Area Refugee Assistance or DARA, is an excellent example of people being brought together around a common cause. In October of 2015, in response to the Syrian refugee crisis, local people answered a call from a resettlement agency in New Haven Integrated Refugee and Immigrant Services, or IRIS. They were implementing a new model for resettling refugees. They would train community groups who decided to fundraise for and organize around this goal. We accomplished that and in the process, in the spring of 2016, became DARA, an official 501c3 nonprofit. To date, DARA has resettled two refugee families and remains committed to helping more in the future. And I would be remiss if I did not give a nod to my good friend James Nadeo, who was the first person to bring us together. <clears throat> what many people are not aware of, however, is that the legal definition of a refugee is very specific. Those granted legal refugee status have fled their home country due to war, oppression, famine, and natural disaster. When they arrive in a border country, they apply to the UN. If the UN grants them refugee status, they are then assigned to a host country who continues vetting them for several years while abroad. If they get through that vetting process, they are then welcomed by the country to which they have been assigned. This is the population that DARA is charged with helping. Legally speaking, asylum seekers are different. They also have fled their home country when they fear for their lives and the lives of their families, but they can only apply for asylum after they have arrived in America or any other country that works with asylees. Even though the legal definitions for these populations are different and require different processes, there are a couple of very important similarities. The first and the most important is that they are all human beings in need of help. It is in this humanitarian spirit that DARA adds our collective voice to this vigil this evening. The other similarity that seems to be lost in much of the current dialogue is that both of these processes are protected by international law. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted by the UN in December of 1948. The United States was a leader in drafting this declaration and voted for it when the UN adopted it. For the first time in human history, it laid out fundamental human rights that needed to be followed by all nations, by all governments. It was translated into over 500 languages. The United States preaches these ideals to other countries and condemns those that fail to follow them. Article 1 of this charter states, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. A spirit of brotherhood. Article 5 states, 
No one shall be subjected to torture or to cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. Is separating children from their parents cruel? The experts say yes, that it will lead to trauma that will affect them the rest of their lives. Most parents would say yes. I think all would if they were asked about their own children being separated from them. Is having facilities without adequate running water, enough food, or even soap and toothpaste inhuman and degrading treatment? Yes. Or children sleeping on concrete without blankets or being given enough help when they are sick? Of course, all of that would qualify as inhumane, degrading, and simply shameful. We are failing to uphold the promise we made to the world back in 1948 if we allow this to continue. The American people who believe in these basic human rights need to be screaming from the rooftops that this is not okay. It is possible to implement legal and secure procedures to help those that are looking for safety and security for their families. The refugee resettlement process is an example of a secure process. Certainly we can do better for asylum seekers as well. Now, just as an aside, of course, I have to mention that if anyone here would like more information about what DARA does to help refugees, I have some flyers with me and things, and I'd be happy to talk with anyone. We have other DARA members here sprinkled around, and uh, actually, if you're a volunteer with DARA, would you raise your hand, please? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. And believe me, volunteers at DARA are incredibly committed. They work incredibly hard. It is one of the most uh, amazing, amazing things you can possibly do in your life to help recent immigrants get resettled in the United States. It's not easy, but it is incredibly rewarding. So having said that, thank you again for coming and enjoy the evening.